In this week's video, we're going to be looking at editing techniques that you probably should know in Adobe Lightroom, including intersecting masks, pressing V in the keyboard, syncing your settings, and a few more. Let's dive right in. Intersecting masks in Adobe Lightroom is a great way of enhancing your images, and any of the masks can be intersected with each other. In this case, I am going to choose the luminance range here to enable the highlights just to stand out even more in the image. So once selected, I can refine this even further by dragging on the slider and you'll notice that the image is refining slightly. I can take it away from there and bring the highlights back down and it's only certain areas. If I hold Alt or Option on my keyboard with the mask selected, the Intersect button appears and then I choose the brush. And in this case, what happens is the areas that I paint on will only be affected by the edits that I make. I try and keep the flow down for this so that if I need a couple of passes to it, that, that will work as well. In the higher areas or highlighted areas, should I say, some of them I choose not to work within because it will just push it too much for that. Once I've painted all the areas I want, in this case, I'm just going to adjust the exposure slightly. You can see if I push it too far, so we have to be subtle with this, but it can be adjusted by anything at all. Contrast, highlights, shadows, color, sharpness, whatever you want to adjust. Adding a radial filter as well will allow you to highlight certain areas within it. And again, all the adjustments are there for you to utilize. Water finds its own level wherever you are on planet Earth. So to do this, go into the Crop tool, take the Spirit Level tool, click on one edge of the water on the horizon, drag your mouse right off the screen, leveling it along the horizon of the water, and then let go. That will level the horizon for you. One of the things that I find useful in the masking feature is being able to draw a straight line, whether it's around objects like this or in architecture. To do it, you simply select the brush mask, click the first point, hold down shift, and click the next point that you want to connect for that. Enabling the highlight or blacks clipping allows you to see areas of similar value and in this case with the black background or another white background I find this very useful to ensure overall coverage. Selective sharpening of your image is done simply by adjusting the amount on the sharpening slider and then going to the masking slider while holding down Alt or Option on your keyboard. Everything in white is being sharpened, everything in black is not being sharpened. Once you've completed all your edits, you may want to sync them, which will speed up your workflow entirely. So you click the sync button and you have the choice of synchronizing what settings you want, including masks now. Once you're happy with that, you just click synchronize and that will go through the process of syncing your images. The processing time depends entirely on how many images you are syncing. A very useful way for speeding up batch processing of images. When it comes to cropping, most of us are familiar with the rule of thirds. But if you press the letter O on your keyboard, you can cycle through other cropping guides. If your image is flat and has no contrast and you want to bring that back but are unsure how much to bring back into it, pressing V in the keyboard removes the colour information and allows you to see the image in black and white. Once you've pressed V in the keyboard, you can then go in and adjust the contrast, the highlights, the shadows as you see fit to get the image that you want. 
A quick way of doing this is by holding down shift in the keyboard and double clicking on the sliders. This will allow Lightroom to guess how much you want in this. Now it's not always successful, but sometimes you get the results that you're after. Pressing V again brings back the color information. And remember, you can adjust the sliders afterwards to your own preference. If you find yourself endlessly scrolling through the develop modules in Lightroom, you can collapse them saving screen space and your time. To do this, simply click on any of the dark grey areas and select solo mode. What solo mode does is it automatically collapses a develop module when you open the next one. So if I choose basic and then I choose calibration, basic collapses. It's also the same for the presets, history and collections channel. Simply right click, choose solo mode and they collapse. Changing the background colour in Lightroom has been available for a long time now and it's becoming more and more refined. The one thing that you have to remember is you have to work with the tonality and the colour that is already there. So in this case with the white background, to adjust the colours within this I had to darken it down slightly and then adjust the colours. But you'll notice at the edge of the hair and on the left hand side in particular you'll see that that there. How we adjust that is we then go in and add to it via a brush. Now within the brush turn down both the flow and the density. Make the brush really large or quite large and paint over this area. This will allow you to blend it in more naturally. Now with the new AI masking, the new addition to it, you can change the colour of clothes within Lightroom as well. And you just check the mask, click create mask, and then go in. Again, you are working with the colour that's there. So certain colours will not be available. You have to work with the underlying RGB of the pixels. Once you've done that, what you can do is you can edit your image further and in this case I am adding a radial mask which I am applying to the background so that it sits behind the model. Then I'm going to select the next image that I want everything to go to and then click synchronize. Again the time this will take will depend on how many masks you have. You can see now that these have been applied to this image here and I can now go in and edit any part of this. As you can see, I can move the radial filter wherever I want. I can also adjust the brightness of it, so the size of it, whatever I want to do with it. And that's the great thing with being able to sync edits. The close mask has also came across with this syncing and I can also go in again and adjust this in any form that I want to get it to any colour that I want as well. Doing this now again it's all to do with speeding up your workflow. Background as well I can go back in and I can change the background colour and there you can see the before and after of these edits. The desktop background in Lightroom can also be changed and this is particularly useful when coming to the printing stage. Just simply right click, choose white, and then observe your image for a good tonal and contrast balance. These are only a few of the methods that are available for you in Lightroom and you can utilise any of them at any point at all. In this case, adding a radial gradient in the foreground here and turning up the exposure just to allow the eyes to be drawn in further to this image. It's a great way and it's a great thing to learn is all the different techniques and how they can be utilised for your edits. Adding to and subtracting from masks so that you can pinpoint the areas that you actually want to edit. 
It's worth investing some time in your editing prowess as ultimately it will allow your images to shine. <laughs>